Hi, I'm Chris James and you're watching A Healthy Alternative. Today we're going to be continuing our water series focusing on what is water. We're missing a piece of the puzzle. You start getting healthy and you just become a better person. We need to start focusing more on the individual. So today, we're going to get right back into the water series. Uh, we're going to be doing talking about water all month long. Uh, I didn't get the tester in in order to do the original video I wanted to do, so I'll end up doing that next week. I just got the confirmation that the tester is in the mail, so we'll have that for next week. But anyway, today we're going to be talking about what water is as well as how do I prepare my water. I'm going to briefly go over the entire process of how I prepare my water. And then we'll be looking at a couple of other things um, as far as structuring water and uh, yeah, so let's get into it. Okay, so what is water? Well, water is H2O, and I find it interesting that we don't really pay too much attention to what water is comprised of because there's two hydrogens and one oxygen, which means, in my opinion, that the hydrogen is more important because there's more of it, right? Uh, we tend to think that oxygen is, is really, really important, which it is, um, especially when it comes to breathing. But the important thing to realize about water is that it's actually transporting hydrogen. The oxygen molecule kind of creates a, a stable state for the hydrogen to be transported in because hydrogen by itself is highly volatile. Now, the interesting thing is a few, maybe a couple decades ago, I started hearing about the, the water cars, the hydrogen cars and things like that. And I remember them saying one of the big issues they were going to have is storing all the hydrogen. And then I started thinking, well, water stores hydrogen, right? And when I started learning about the, the alkaline scale, alkalinity, and I'm, I'm sure you guys have heard the old saying that disease can't live in an alkaline environment. And the interesting thing about alkalinity and the alkalinity scale is that it is testing potential hydrogen. Okay, so pH is potential hydrogen. So the alkalinity of the body has a lot to do with uh, hydrogen. And water has hydrogen in it. It's mostly hydrogen. And so um, it's interesting that water is comprised of this element that actually helps to restore the balance of our body. And of course, that's just the tip of the iceberg. So the thing we know about hydrogen is that you can use it to run an engine. And engines, as we know, take a lot of energy. Uh, obviously, hydrogen can ca cause small explosions in the engine. And of course, that's what powers the, the car. Well, it's the same thing with our body. We could use the hydrogen to power our body, except the body uses a much more delicate type of energy, which is implosion instead of explosion. Uh, the, the explosions are your, a stick of dynamite is an explosion. Uh, implosion is what a plant would use, where it takes energy, absorbs it, and then it's able to multiply the energy through this process of implosion, and it restores itself. It's, I don't, it's really, really uh, interesting. I don't understand it extremely well, but I understand the principle that it's a, it's a much healthier, safer energy versus the, the energy that we typically use today. So that's kind of, you know, what water is made out of. Now, obviously, last week we talked about the structuring of water and the importance of that. And I just wanted to briefly kind of talk about that again, because I want to really drill home the point that structuring your water or, or consuming structured water is important. Now, think of water as a little memory chip, right? We talked about how water is a crystal last week and it can store memory. Well, uh, the thing about this memory chip is it's pretty much going to store the memory of anything that it, any interactions it has. Structuring the water is like formatting the memory chip or deleting the old information off the memory chip. It, it, it creates a clean slate so that you can now imprint your data on it, whatever it is that you want to put on it, whether it's, uh, you know, healing frequency or um, just, uh, you know, happy energy or success or whatever, whatever vibes you kind of want to put into the water, structuring it allows you to do that uh, without having to worry about distractions from old memory, old data. I mean, just imagine if you got a cell phone and it had someone else's pictures in it already. Like now you got to go through, delete it, and there might be a picture in there that offends you. Um, the beautiful thing about structuring your water is you start with a clean slate. So that's very, very important. Now you have to think about what your water does. It's going to the treatment plants and it's getting fluoride, chlorine. Uh, it's got heavy metals. It's got 
all sorts of things that it just picks up along the way that is, that is being treated with. But then also, like I mentioned before, water is very sensitive. And so it can pick up the negative energy of anybody that's, that's within, you know, pretty much close range with it. The reason this is important to understand is because when you're buying bottled water, or you're buying water from different stores and places like that, uh, even if they come from a great source, by the time it gets to you, nine times out of ten, that water is completely dead. OK, they say that it only takes about uh, I think it was 300 feet for water of linear movement for water to die. Right now, what you have to understand is when they're pulling that water out of the ground or from a spring or wherever they're grabbing the water from, even if it's a beautiful, natural place, it's going to be transported in these these suction tubes these it's going to be moved in a very linear manner by the time it goes through all of its processing and bottling i'm sure that water has little to no energy left in it okay so this is why i'm not really a fan of buying bottled water even if the water comes in a glass jar you still need to to do something extra to it at home to really get the full benefit of it and this is the reason why we have such a hard time becoming hydrated and being healthy, even when we're doing the right things, is because it's so many different layers that we have to understand. And while it does sound like a lot, I feel like I've kind of gotten ahead of you guys and done a lot of the research for you. And I'm going to kind of just go over briefly what I do to my water. It's a very simple process, um, not very time consuming at all. And I've just gotten used to doing it every day or every couple days. And so for me, it's just, you know, business as usual. So the first thing I do is I grab some tap water. And the beautiful thing about this process is you can use tap water. You can use bottled water. You can use distilled water. It doesn't really matter what form your water comes in to begin with, because we're going to be taking it through all the steps to get it ready to drink. So the first thing I do is I grab a gallon of tap water. We're going to put it in the distiller and we're going to distill the water. Now that's going to pull out all of the inorganic materials in the water, including most of, if not all of the fluoride. I mean, you should be able to pull the fluoride out using the distilling method, but sometimes that fluoride is pretty stubborn. Then what I like to do is I like to take my water structuring device and I run my water through my water structuring device. OK, it's just a very simple device. And what that does is it wipes the memory clean, because one thing that I want to point out is when you distill water, uh, it's actually a very violent process for the water. And that that's that's not something that you really want to be drinking, just pure distilled water. I mean, it's better than drinking tap water. Don't get me wrong. But it's a it's an incomplete process. OK, there's still more steps to take to to optimize the water. And that's what we're talking about here is optimizing the water that you're drinking. So uh, you distill it. I run it through my my water structuring device, which just mimics the natural movement of nature. OK, whether it was, you know, rolling down a stream or a river or whatever. And of course, that erases all of the, the memory, all of the negative energy that's in the water. Then I take it and I put it in a clear glass jar with a cork and I put that outside and I let the sun energize it from anywhere from four hours to three days. The longer, the better. When I bring the water back in, I'm going to transfer it to my I have a, a, a large container, glass container that sits on my windowsill. And it's about I think it's three gallons or two and a half gallons or something like that. And I pour that that water into the, my large reservoir. And as I do that, I structure it again. OK, which, in my opinion, just further helps the process. Um, the thing that I really love about structuring the water is it, it, it softens the water, the texture of the water. Uh, which might sound weird to some of you all if you're not used to if you're not just familiar with these processes and you're not familiar with drinking this type of water on a consistent basis. It changes the texture of the water. It's just it's lighter. It's fluffier. I don't know. It's, it's good, though. It's a good thing. And then um, from that point forward, you know, I keep my water kind of in my room and and I like to try to stay positive. Uh, you know, I'm always I'm always looking to think positively. If something negative crosses my mind, I like to kind of take a second, take a couple breaths and, and refocus my energy in a positive way. And that'll help keep the water safe. Now, like I told you guys in the last video, I have my little uh, mirroring glass infinity jar, which just um, it's a it's a colored glass jar, which will help protect your water from light waste and, uh, you know, you know, anything else that could possibly get in the water as far as light frequency goes. 
Right, so that's the water that I like to consume. Now obviously, this sounds like a long drawn out process, but I promise you, once you kind of get in the swing of things, it's, it's, it's like I said, business as usual. And uh, for me, it's not a problem at all. I transport my water around just fine. Uh, my little Marin glass infinity jar has a cork in it as well. And uh, when I don't have that water available to me, I could tell it, it, it's, it's just it's a difference in the quality of the water, um, the taste, the texture, everything is a little bit different. And I just really don't like not having that. Now, with that being said, let's go back a little bit and uh, kind of and I'm going to I want to give you guys a little bit better idea of why all of this is so important. Right. You do all of this stuff. Chris, what is it really doing for me? How does it help?